how how would you say it has changed the actual way that you like approach your work day like maybe mm -hmm. not a specific task but like do you think about approaching things in a different way now? For me, one of the biggest parts or freedoms I would say that I feel like the tool has given me is the ability to feel present at more points during my day because I'm less worried that I'm going to miss or forget something. Again, I'm in a lot of meetings, so yeah. this is really true of when you're going, let's say you have six hours of meetings that day. There is a lot of stress of, am I gonna remember everything I'm supposed to do from that meet, from no. all those meetings? No, Probably not. not. And so having co-pilot on means I can kind of rest easy that if I need to go back and ask it questions, I'll be able to find the answers relatively quickly yeah. versus having to watch six hours of meeting recordings back or something yeah. like that. Right. Or like, yeah, when transcription came out and it was a great feature, but it's only as helpful as how much time you have to go, to go review and, and yes, read yes. through. And so to be for someone, to, it's basically you're asking someone else to go read the thing. Right. and tell right. you a synopsis, which right. is super helpful. So you get to be more present. It, yeah, good. it definitely allows me to feel like I can be, especially if you're a facilitator of meetings or you're trying to also capture notes and be a part of the conversation, you can just be a part of the conversation and know that the notes are going to be taken. And then afterwards, you can go back and we kind of use the word interrogate. I don't know if that's the right term. Matt In, used Interrogate it. Use the, the transcript a little bit. And it probably is kind of how a lot of project managers feel when people are like, what was the summary? What was the, Yeah. <laughs> and you're asking that of the transcript. Um, so I think for me, it's created a pre more present mindset at work, awesome. which I don't even know if I can put a value on. It's been really great. Sweet. $30 a month. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, has it changed any of your perspective of like, if you show up to work, is your, is your mind in any different place knowing that you have co-pilot? Uh, I don't feel as bad, uh, responding to people's questions uh, or fe giving feedback on people's ideas, uh, knowing that they can easily take what I'm saying and put it into Copilot and do something different. Uh, you know, I think this, 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 what we're doing right now on this webinar or this podcast is a good example of that. Yeah. Um, we had an idea. You, you created a, a list. I was like, Hey, I feel like it's kind of the same as what we're doing for the webinar. What should we do? You kind of sent it through and said, hey, what are some other ideas? Give me a different um, angle. Mm -hmm. You know, when I've done it personally within like my blog writing and some of the other things, I think that also has been very helpful. It uh, really takes a little bit of the pressure off, you know, coming up with alternate ideas. Uh, I don't always like what it does. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always the right thing or even in the ballpark, but it gives you a really quick, easy way to get an alternate idea and get the juices flowing mm -hmm. um, without having to go into a meeting and mm -hmm. let's all talk about it. Does anybody have any ideas or have me try to explain what I'm trying to say or like it, it is, uh, it is changed the way uh, that I think about that, um, mm -hmm. that process. And, and this may resonate with some people, but I tend to enjoy editing and, working off of something that's already created, that's just sort of, it's easier for me, especially when I'm trying to do, again, context switching of this to that, to that, to that. Mm -hmm. So if I have to sit down and create a lot of things completely new, and I know we've got other creatives on our team who they live and breathe creating content. Sure. I'm definitely someone who is more of the editing mindset. I know this is true of, of people when you like write resumes. It's really hard to write your own resume, but it's really easy to edit other people's. Yeah, or uh, a biography. So, right, yeah, or like a biography bio. or whatever. So I, in some ways it is sort of, um, what's the word? I, I think a lot of us have that. It's, it's kind of a generic quality. A white empty page can yeah, be really white space intimidating. Can be, it can be hard, or at least it can just be draining. I mean, we can sure. all probably do it, but it takes more energy. Yep. So if you're able to throw just, I was telling Matt here before we started, I usually put like 20, 10 word, 20 word prompts in if I'm trying to get it to write me an email, just something super quick, super messy. It usually doesn't spit out the best, but then I edit from there. And for whatever reason, that is more motivating and much easier for me to start with than just a blank. For sure. White piece of paper. And I feel like, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but most of the time we know we, we're not relying on Copilot to give us the idea we're mm -hmm. asking it to put a framework around an idea, right? Yes, yeah. Organize the idea in a actionable 
So it's not List, necessarily like yeah. inventing the here's the next 10 blogs for you to write. It's like, no, I have I know kind of what I want to talk about. Can you give me like a structure that I can work mm-hmm. within? Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not doing everything from start to finish. It's like playing this beginning 10, 20% role. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I was the person when Word came out with the thesaurus feature and you could right click and choose a different word. I loved that feature because yeah. it's just, it gives you, like you were saying, more options, more ways of saying things. And this just takes basically thesaurus and <laughs> does it to everything. Well, I mean, I think, that, I think the thing to think about when you think about what it's actually doing is it's taking all of the ideas that mm-hmm. you have and marrying it with its understanding of language to create content that maybe combines things, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it takes a research paper and turns it into something that is more creative in the way it's written and structured, right? Um, It's taking something that was maybe a presentation for an executive team and turning it more into a marketing presentation for an end customer, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's a very interesting topic because most people talk about and think about AI as being something brand new, thesaurus, grammar checking, uh, you know, autocorrect. Reword this reword to be this more thing. formal. They're all mm-hmm. the precursors to what we're talking about. Now, Copilot, ChatGPT, they are way more advanced, can do mm-hmm. way more. They're, they're based on a different type of technology, but they're all, it's all similar stuff. Is there anything that you're genuinely like worried about the long term in the workplace with using Mm. these tools? Yeah, one that we talked about um, earlier was just there's not necessarily a disclaimer that comes along with it being confidential or private information. I mean, there's always the disclaimer that it's generated by Copilot, but if you're searching your private data within Microsoft 365, let's say you're asking it for bullet points from the last quarterly update, and one of those points comes from a slide where there was a disclaimer that said this is confidential information, this is not public, and someone pulls that from Copilot, not realizing that it's confidential, and then shares it at their next sure. client meeting. Those types of things uh, are difficult because unless you're doing the work of the reference point and all of that, mm-hmm. it's it's hard. you you got to have that human nuance um, accounted for. And it, to take that one step further, in general, it is Copilot, not Autopilot. You know, we're you're expected to review it. Um, You know, you've had scenarios where in a meeting it attributes this, the, what people are saying to the wrong person. Right. Um, Right. It doesn't quite understand the nuance of what the conversation really was. Um, You know, if you're summarizing a long email thread, you know, and if something doesn't make sense, go back and check it because it, it is not a hundred percent. It is not, it is not exact. It's not precise. It's not specific all and a hundred percent correct all the time. And I can see people getting very comfortable with it. And then Assuming just, that it's good. Uh, yeah, over time. And I, I don't even mean that much time. Look at us, how comfortable we are yeah. with it in just a couple of weeks, um, in even a year, getting so comfortable that, yeah, those are reference points, but we just trust that it's got it. Right. And uh, ugh, that could get you in a It's like mess. self-driving car. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> I, the other two things is I've experienced it from the other side. I've had people from Microsoft use Copilot to try to answer a question that I'm asking them. And it uh, feels bad. Like, uh-huh. I, we're, you know, we're getting these responses from people who should be, should be able to find us the answer. And instead of finding us the answer, they're using Copilot and effectively giving us the same thing that I could get if I asked Google or something else right, to get right. the, the mm-hmm. information. Um, and it doesn't feel very good. Right. right? Yeah. Um, it's one thing to ask it and then research it and then provide the response. But to literally get a response back that says, hey, I co-piloted this. Here's the results. Yeah. The quality of things may greatly suffer mm-hmm. if there's not a human. Like what if work just becomes that where we're constantly just like using AI to mm-hmm. collaborate with each other? Like, I don't know. There's a risk, but I think we'll always long for that like human touch that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we all serve each other through that and yeah do good do good by the other person let's close like so this is what is the impact on productivity ben we've talked about some good things so maybe not so good things what was it like to learn copilot like let's talk about the learning curve 
maybe the first couple days versus where you're at now? How how has that gone for you guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you're specifically asking about co-pilot learning curve, but I think there's also just a learning curve to understanding what you can use AI for. Mm -hmm. So I think I went through that learning curve first because ChatGPT came out, and we were messing around with that, playing yep. around with that, and you do start to really get creative on how you can use these tools. So if you've never used AI before and Copilot's your first, you know, run with the whole thing, um, I would say I'd first encourage you to just mess around with it and kind of try to see what you can do with it, have mm -hmm. some fun with it. That's what I did with ChatGPT. So then when I had Copilot downloaded, I feel like I was already in the right mindset, which is important because prompts are everything with Copilot is creating really creative prompts to get the information out. It's mm -hmm. not going to really do that on its own, although Microsoft gives you some prompts to start. Uh, so that was really my experience of kind of knowing, oh, this is interesting. This is the types of things I can ask it, and it's going to actually give me this information back. Um, but then finding the actual logo in all of the tools takes a minute of, yeah, where do I open it up? Wow, there's a lot of different places I can open it up. Is it grounded in web? Is it grounded in my data? Um, so paying attention to that. And Talk then, about that just for a second. What's web versus that? This may be something people don't understand. Yeah, so Matt mentioned this earlier, but ChatGPT is something that's completely web-based, uh, grounded in web-based data, public yep, information, yep. intranet, basically. Um, internet, not internet. Internet. Internet, internet, yeah. internet. And then if you choose, and I think the only place I've really toggled it on and off is in the Copilot app that you grab from the taskbar. You can toggle in the right hand between web-based and private, which means it's gotcha. just working on your data. Uh, it's hard to talk about the web versus work uh, differentiation without talking a little bit about Copilot as a brand. Uh, Copilot as Microsoft 365 Copilot, the whole point of buying it is so that you get the private, the work mm -hmm. grounded, right? It's grounded in your Microsoft 365 data, right? Uh, at the same time, you lose out on all of the things that would be web-based content. And so... Mm -hmm. You are correct. The only place that you can really see it often is in, it's actually Copilot Search, the, the Copilot Windows app, yeah. um, which is a replacement for Bing Search in Windows. Um, and in that model, they want you to be able to choose Bing Search Public, which would be web, versus Bing Search, which would be work, in the work, or the, the private version. And uh, But I found it actually annoying that in all of them, I couldn't go, yeah, I don't want to ask this question just about my private data. I, I really want it to be focused more on web content because I'm just asking about stuff, right? Mm -hmm. I want one co-pilot experience related to this, and you don't really have that, um, which is when we talk about, you know, learning curve, it's probably the biggest learning curve is that each one of these tools has its own co-pilot integration with its own right. UI a little bit and its own functionality and its own approach to how it's using it. They're all very similar. Mm -hmm. They're all still text-based. You ask it a question or you, you know, give it a piece of data and it spits something else back out, but they're all a little different. And they're all, you have to find them all, mm -hmm. as you said. You have to know that they're there. Um, yeah, it's... I think it's really important to have a flexible mindset when you're first using Copilot, even I'm six weeks in. But if you get frustrated easily, it's not gonna, you're not gonna love the tool because you really do get different responses all the time. And you have to be good at just, oh, I'm gonna just try this a different way. I'm just gonna ask this a different way. Or man, this is really not working. I gotta change how I'm working. Um, if you want it to work the same way every time, it's not the tool for no. you, so. Having a, yeah, experimental mindset is definitely the way to go.